think. Yeah. Uh, because it keeps decks more honest. And uh, the more, most important thing is we're not going to see a 3-0 with one deck like Zoo or Hunter. <laughs> They're going to have to spread out their skills a little bit as we go into the first game. Warrior versus Paladin. Now, I was saying this yesterday, uh, Zumo, that I thought Paladin was highly underrepresented in the, in the previous day's games because I thought Paladin is one of the best classes now that GVG's come out. Yeah. And I was really surprised not to see it be played much. Yeah, I, I think today is going to be a little bit different. I agree with you there. I think it's a really strong deck. Um, I especially think it's strong against Control Warrior, which is making a comeback. Now, well, not necessarily a comeback, but it, it's sort of gaining more popularity. Uh, with a lot of these new cards, and I think actually more than half the players today are bringing Paladin. Good. So uh, good. that's uh, always good to see. You can see the Mulligans here, Backspace, throwing in some Explosive Sheeps into his Control Warrior. Yeah, Explosive Sheep is a very strong tool, um, just because it synergizes so well with many of the one damage as well as the whirlwind effects. Yep. So Explosive Sheep is really good for defensive nature. Yep. No one has quite yet picked up on another way to build Warrior. But uh, I think that just requires some time. I think there's going to be eventually a way to scale Warrior a little bit more mid rangey Depends on how um, people see it fit. Yeah. I well, think you have that screw junk cluster thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Plus two plus. It's like a Houndmaster for mechs. Yeah, no, nobody's really experimented with that yet. I put that in my, my Hobgoblin Warrior deck, though. It synergizes. That sounds awful. You Hobgoblin a Warbot, and then you throw that 2-5 clunker onto it. All of a sudden, oh. all of a sudden you have a 5-7 Warbot. How do you deal with that? You don't. You lose. I guess I just uh, quit. I concede at that point. Or I play Explosive Shoot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Deny that from being attacked. <laughs> well, uh, the Paladin and uh, Knife Juggler does have a lot of innate, innate synergy with its hero power, but Muster for Battle has been one of these really strong cards. Uh, unfortunately, Powder has to make a tough decision. He has to give up his Knife Juggler. He doesn't get the immediate synergy, but still, Muster for Battle. How do you deal with this card effectively? Yeah. You you have to. You can't like deal with it immediately. You have to use Whirlwind to clear off the one ones, and even then, it's like he still has the weapon. Yeah. Or Explosive Sheep. <laughs> or Explosive Sheep. That's a great way. I, I like Muster for Battle not only because it, it gives you a lot of value just innately in the card, but it also synergizes well with with like Quartermaster. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, things like that. So, um, it, it's I, I really like that, and I, I'm looking for paladins to start running like, well, not start running, but run again like cult masters and stuff like that, uh, because a turn three muster for battle, turn four cult master is actually a really strong play, and it can get you some additional card draw early on. Yeah, Ty the Time was experimenting with that. Okay. At King Gwyn, uh, he had I believe one cult master, maybe even two, but it used it as a way to get some good card draw. So. Yeah. It's cool to see another card being improved instead of just a new card being all flashy. Like, yeah. old cards like Cult Master get more power. Yeah. So the Pilot Shredder here is actually very problematic. Although, I believe there is a way that you can uh, try and trigger the Death Rattles. Um, drawing a card here, I guess Backspace, backspace is going to prioritize that instead. See what 2-drop comes off of the Pilot Shredder as well. Just a second. Whoa! That could be pretty dangerous, actually. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty significant damage. Yeah. That's going the other way. You don't want to use, like, Execute. Oh, no, not at all. Um, two Elf is a little problematic. Maybe the Bomb Lobber can snipe it. Oh, that's, that's really difficult, though. You can't guarantee that. That's a really inconsistent play, and if you're using the weapon to clear off this Amani Berserker, you're taking five damage, and he's starting to get low. I mean, Paladins are definitely not known for their burst, but... I think they have more tools now to be able to do that than once upon a time. Well, uh, you know, that that zombie job being put out there makes him feel a little bit better, though. Yeah. It's, now he has ways to gain back health. Um, fire War Axe onto, into, and, like, the, the, the creatures usually hurts here at this point because you're at 20. But yeah. I still think, it, you know, having it, the zombie child there is like, ah, well, at least he can't turn around compared to a priest, which yeah. has the Arcanized Soul Priest. Yeah. Still a, a little bit of an awkward situation for what he's going to throw down after Just this. play the Explosive Sheep. Explosive Sheep. Floating mana, though. No, nah, that's I mean, that's you, you, he's been floating mana the entire game, being uncomfortable. Powder, of course, this is not what he wanted to see. Another AoE whirlwind effect that attacks all creatures. Yep. 
This seems like a little bit more of an aggressive huh. type paladin deck. He, he's running two knife jugglers in here. So that's synergized as well with Mustard for Battle also. Um, but I'm not sure how many big threats that he's actually running in this deck. The only one we've seen is the Tyrion right there. But uh, definitely different from the Paladin deck that we saw yesterday from Shoop that was very, very control heavy. Do you think uh, he should have... Okay, so Powder chose to attack all face there and pass initiative to his turn. Yeah. That's is that that's okay, right? Yeah. Because as the Paladin, you're generally trying to play it slower. Um, even though you have Knife Juggler, which is more mid-range centric and yeah. slightly aggressive. Uh, despite that, you're still okay taking it later on. Yeah. Um, well, it, it depends because I'm not sure, how, like I said, not sure just how many late game threats he's actually running. Um, Paladin? Yeah, the Paladin. Well, he's got Tyrion in hand. Yeah, but Usually that's what else? Usually that's what it is. Probably lay on hands and then hmm. some other mid-game creature that might be able to use. Well, I'm not sure if he's running Kodos or Bolvar. That is a possibility. You know, like, there's a lot of mid-range stats usually in Paladin. Yeah. Hmm. You don't want to throw down the Tyrion, do I you right you now? Do. Really? It's you're pretty close to killing your opponent. Yeah, that's true. You haven't really uh, gone through like any type of removal though. Well, your opponent's gonna be saving removal anyway. It's just two chains of thoughts. One is that you save it so that way he's exhausted removal. Yeah. The other is he's gonna have it eventually, so the earlier you get it out, the less chance he has of having it. Yep. That's true. And uh you want to put pressure on it and force him to have that removal now because the warrior's just going to... It feels like the warrior in this situation is just going to stabilize a lot better because he's got card advantage in his hand. Um, you're not going to really get him in a better position than now to to start trying to, to push for a win. Especially if, if this is a heavy mid-range paladin, mm. then he's going to get outgunned the further the game goes. Well, it still can just have knife jugglers, so that way it's good anti-aggro stabilization with mustard for battle. So, I mean, it's it's definitely a changeup. I don't know if the knife juggler will alert him immediately, though, of, of having exactly to, that it, it's going to be a mid-range aggressive version. Yeah. All right. Well, the Ashbringer is out in full force. It's 15 damage available to be distributed. Polyjuice Shredder. So, I think Backspace also is running Steeds. Yeah. Um, which is just so powerful yeah. in, in the late stages of the game, especially in control matchups. And you have the Sneasel Shredder, so that way it imposes a big threat. Not to mention it also can drop like a Ragnaros after it dies. Yeah, it's so sticky. And a lot of times in those control matchups, your opponent accounts for just being able to remove, like, remove a legendary one turn or remove a creature one turn and then play a creature one turn, not uh, have to deal with two creatures per turn. Um, and... Even cards like Brawl aren't that great unless you can remove the Sneeds first. Because if you just Brawl with a, a big board with the Sneeds on it, then you're just going to be left with the Legendary. And there's some Warriors that still keep, like, Iron Beak Owl in their decks. Uh, we even saw Spellbreaker yesterday. But a lot of Warriors, I think, are actually cutting some of the Silences from their deck. I think Owl is actually still really crucial, though, because um, Paladin has a really hard time chewing through things. Ooh, flame dunk them. That's actually funny. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. Um, wow, that's actually like a lot of damage being aimed right back at him. That's twelve. Wow, twelve with uh, two more, uh, four he's, more. That's sixteen. He's, he's one off lethal right now. Jeez. Wow, this is. That's so funny. A flame tongue totem. Well, I mean, he, I guess either way, he'd probably be having two damage from the two drop. But this one's still pretty interesting, and right, because you don't expect the synergy with like muster for battle or like yeah. the hero power. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, everything's a searing totem. So he opts to uh, to do damage to the face. He's hovering over the idea of playing a quality consecrate to try and deal with it. You know, now that Gromosh is out of the picture too, that's one of the main ways that Warrior can burst the Paladin out of the game. Yeah. And that's usually a big act of desperation. Powder mm. is trying to go for the throat here. Um, and it makes sense, granted, that Paladin, 
I mean, his other option was to drop Alex Straza, and that didn't feel exactly good either. So Backspace is just trying to fight back as much for the board, but it doesn't seem like it's working out very well. Yeah, he's, he's contemplating whether or not he wants to actually use the Equality Consecrate, con consecrate or just take the 10 damage to face. I think, well, you want to do the 5 damage to your opponent. Yeah. Yeah, he thought about it for a second, and now he puts his opponent at 3. And he does still have the weapon available, Whoa. so even if the board is cleared... Well, that's a big draw. He's got a Whirlwind now. Yeah. Straza's on his side. Uh, th that's actually a really big draw now that I think <laughs> about it for backspace. Yeah, wow. Keeps himself alive. Well, here's the thing. Uh, backspace baited all of like the tools from Powder. He... <gasps> no <laughs> way. Oh, yes. This time for sure. Oh, man, backspace. Well, it doesn't really matter if it was a Devastor or a Squirrel because it would have been taken out by the Ashbringer. But yeah. at least it's, if it was the 1-1, one, one, he probably wouldn't have to do anything. Yeah, it's something. So Powder is not happy. He's like, well, he got the 5-5 five, five and it forced out my Ashbringer. Yeah, maybe this is a way. Maybe this is a way for Backspace to climb back into the game. I think Ragnaros and Cool Taskmaster here is more than sufficient for this turn. If it hits the Tink Master, how on earth does Powder deal with this? He doesn't because he, I guess he does have the second... Consecrate, so if he draws into equality, he has a way to clear. But no. then he's still got a lot of threats to be able to deal with it. And that's not going to do much at all. Okay, well, the muster for battle is actually pretty nice. Yeah, it's going to uh, give more targets for Rag to snipe out. Yeah, absolutely. Does he play the Aldor, though? Does he want more targets? Mm. Does he even want to have ability to start fighting back? I guess it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, right? Yeah. The Alder might be best served on a more legitimate target. Um, There's still some threats left in the deck. Oh, sure. Dr. Doom. Or Dr. Boom, excuse me. Yeah. We're going to be making that mistake a lot over the next couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I said that. Dr. Doom more time than Dr. Boom yesterday. So, oh. Backspace is climbing back in here. And, uh, you know, the Whirlwind Effect will clear off a lot of these 1-1s in the next couple of turns. Oh. Shot to the face. I think he's really uncomfortable with the idea that there might be a few tokens, and if he draws another equality, yeah, he'll have the ability of easily uh, removing these with just the one ones. So I think that was not necessarily what Backspace wanted. Yeah, he just just cleared the Paladin's board. Yeah, he's starting to sort of lose the card advantage he had as well. So yeah, you he always might be a little do scared. As a warrior, though. Yeah, Paladin's so good at fighting Warrior with uh, despite having lower resources. Yeah. Because look, I mean, he uses weapon to attack a 1-1. One -one. Yeah, yeah. Because he, a warrior, oh, a lot of times, they're... My <laughs> goodness! Wow, Harrison Jones. Uh, I, th I think he's also contemplating like how he wants to deal with the Sylvanas first before anything else. Hmm. He doesn't really have a clean can, way of dealing with it. Can he legitimately 50-50 like, to win the game here? If he like Dr. Booms and then attacks with uh, the Death Spite, I think he can. No, that's uh, that's too risky. I think, yeah, way too risky. Doctor Boom first. Uh, so let's see if Sylvanas can steal one of those instead. Yeah. Minimizing the chances that oh, he can get man. something good out of if this. If this hits Sylvanas, and Sylvanas steals Ragnaros. I don't even know. Oh, <laughs> so Backspace dodged a bullet there. I don't even know if that's going to... Well, I guess with the Sylvanas on the board, he still has just a little bit of extra protection okay. here, but so I'll bring him up to 14. Consecrate here, I guess? Do you, you don't lay on hands? Well, I guess you do need to lay on hands because you might die. Cause yeah. I, but the thing is... Uh, oh, you're right. I didn't pay attention to the health count. I was trying to think about ways you can interact with the board now that you have Sylvanas. Yeah. If he Consecrates, he could just die right now. That's true. So you, get, you do lay on hands. Yeah, if he lays on hands, he still can... I don't even know. Because then what is he going to do? Throw the Sylvanas into something to try and get Dr. Boom a rag? Try and get rag and then kill the Dr. Boom? I don't even know. Yeah, that's probably his best bet. Yeah. Dr. Boom is so much damage. Yeah. So then what if he draws a quality off of this uh, this uh, lay on hands? Then he, con he equalities and then takes one of the creatures. Yeah. Oh! oh this is risky! Oh! The game is over! Because it looks like nothing is oh. highlighted, and that is <laughs> oh, man. six damage to the dome, <laughs> exact lethal. And Dr. Boom has locked. They're out and rampant, so you, you need to have a way to deal with it.
It's time for backspace to be on the punishing side because you have those 1-1s. One uh, you have the ability to be really annoying back at your opponent. And uh, I think backspace is feeling really good about this one. Yeah, and these guys, two decks look very, very similar to each other. As you can see, the Dr. Boom from from Powder. That doesn't really tell us much because there's still the the explosive sheeps and, and whirlwinds that sometimes warriors take out and trade for other things. But the Knife Juggler as well, you said that's pretty popular now, especially with the synergy with Muster for Battle. It gives you a little bit of an edge in sort of the aggro matchups. It allows you to deal with those a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, even control sometimes as well, the little bit of pepper damage. I mean, yeah. the way you can think about it is just, um, like, why is Goblin Blast Mage so insane? It's because you can get so much tempo based off the way that the oh, yeah. random hits happen. Yeah. It's the same concept as a knife juggler, if you get the monster for battle synergy. Yep. But, uh, of course, that's just idealistic. It's just, like, another thing that can work well in the deck, but knife juggler isn't the main, isn't, like, the main win condition at all. Yeah. Wow. Could have been pretty good if that Knife Juggler had seen the next turn, but Muster for Battle still a pretty fantastic card. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be nice. That's really good. The fact that it's not necessarily shutting down the weapon. The tempo play is, like, not particularly yeah. amazing. But the card draw is... It is, because you have to use the Fire War Axe to keep the tokens as low as possible. Yeah. Like, you just need to. You hero power because you're trying to play the greed game. You don't want to lose your life justice for no reason. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm sensing a Harrison Jones here. There's really no other play. Yeah, especially since uh, his hand right now, he's probably not too happy with it. So getting those extra card draw. I mean, of course, it's just going to get true silver down, but still that the extra draw that you get from that and actually making use of the Harrison when you can is right. Is good. Very good. Yeah, and you know, you bring up a good point. Uh, b backspace is not necessarily war like torn over about this, too. Um, you know, he still has True Silver Champion. Now that Harrison's out, he knows Tyrion can't get t taken his weapon as well. Yeah. It's really common sometimes just to kill off uh, Tyrion and just steal his uh, Ashbringer. Yeah. So, is there any merit to being greedy with your Harrison Jones, especially against Paladin? Sometimes in the late game, for sure. Um, I think, generally speaking, if you're playing a control deck like Warrior or Paladin, yeah. it scales into late game. Especially against decks like Handlock with Jirax. It's, it's good to have Harrison be the ceiling deal. Yeah. Well, another, a little bit of an awkward play here. You don't, throwing down the Acolyte doesn't seem that great because you know that it's just going to get true silver down and you're not going to get much out of it, but you can actually Taskmaster it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty solid play. Okay. You don't really have anything else on turn five. Um, to me. The cool Taskmaster is a little bit hard to part ways with when you have Execute in hand, but you already have Whirlwind. So yeah. I think it's less necessary. And, uh, you know, in a way, it's like you might develop something else better, too. Oh, if he targets the 1 1, that's interesting creative play. I wasn't considering that. It's because you normally use, like, drawing cards is just so good. Yeah. Wow, okay. That's interesting. Because you know what? Way, He's playing one. around probably the possibility of Quartermaster. That's, like, a new, new card that you're not necessarily thinking about. Yeah. But, like, you never know if he, like, has the ability to just buff it and then, like, completely shut you down. Yeah. But on turn six, that seems a little weird because he wouldn't be able to do anything besides Quartermaster. Let's four, say he had nothing mana. else in his hand. That's true. Very like, true. A Quartermaster would still put out a 3-3, three, three, so for 5 mana you put out, or I guess for 7 mana, how many stats do you put out there? Uh, 13? That's pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. That's, like a, that's like Boulder Fist Ogre status. Yeah. It's like the vanilla benchmark card. Right, exactly. So even just one token, like, I, I, I completely agree. It's like the same effect as Kill to Zod, though. Sometimes yeah. just seizing the board and taking control of it is just as good, if not better. Yeah. Not having to make use of whatever value you would get out of that. Um, huh. So, humility is an interesting card, and uh, sometimes it can it can be a little bit rough to fold that in your hand. But I really like that in a control matchup. You talked earlier about how just how far the the, the paladin hero power goes, especially against warrior, because it can be really annoying to deal with those one health creatures. So, not having card advantage isn't that big of a deal. 
So using that one card to help you gain a little bit more advantage, uh, control over the game and of the board, I think isn't that bad of a thing. Like in some classes, the humility can just be sort of a liability in your hand, a pretty dead card that will only sort of delay the inevitable, especially against aggro decks, but I really like it in control matchups. Yeah, well, if he has Pyromancer, it makes a lot of sense. That as well. Um, well, I guess now that the Death Spite's out, the previous play doesn't really matter, but I was also interested why Backspace killed off the 1-1 one -one to the 2-2 with the Sludge Belcher. Here we go, though. Tyrion gets slammed down immediately, and uh, there is there a way for Powder to deal with it, slash even steal it, maybe? Sylvanas comes down. Too bad you can't execute it, though. <laughs> Still funny, even a year later. <laughs> Yeah, I think that'd be a little bit overpowered. You can well, shield slam it. Here's the thing. How about spreading out the, the threat here? If you muster for battle, and then... Because you have to deal with this. Like, you can't leave Sylvanas up, right? Yeah. Because then if he brawls, he guarantees steals. What yeah, is? yeah. Or like whirlwinds. Muster so then for you battle. need to uh, hero power, and then try to see that the 1 in 4 takes it. Bass doesn't even want to look at what's getting to get stolen. <laughs> I mean, it's a 1 in 5 chance. Oh, oh no! <laughs> wow, that is heartbreaking right there. Whoa. Uh -oh. oh man, <laughs> that is. <laughs> and Powder draws like, even if he if he didn't steal it, he would have had a way to deal with it. Yeah. Oh man, what is happening in these games? The warrior is flipping the paladin upside down, dunking it in the water, and giving it wedgies. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening in these games anymore. And now he's... I mean, just slam Rag and pressure him. You're about to kill him. Yeah, but... You I guess put... you're afraid of extending into a quality, right? That's true. Shield main is... I think Shield main is a great card to put out right now. Because even I if he... So. Even, I'm, even I'm just so aggressive. I just like playing the Rag. Well, game. even if he clears the board, you're still getting something out of Shield main, and I'd rather play defensive in that situation because... Well, I don't know. You get plenty, too. You put him at 11 health. If he does his entire board clearing, I mean, I guess it's But he, if you don't have, like, a way in your hand to kill him if he clears the board, then... You still I don't got, know. You still got you 15 get, points of burn down through weapons. That's true. Gorhal is a big deal. I'm just... I'm just an aggressive. Don't, just don't mind. I'm a very conservative player. I'm, I'm a far-right Hearthstone player. Far-right. <laughs> oh my gosh. But just don't open a news network, because I'm not going to watch. <laughs> it's only for her stuff. Don't worry. Don't worry, Dan. All right, well, Backspace uh, needs to figure out a way to stabilize. He already used his humility, so the Kodo's not going to be that useful. Quality Consecration to come out here. And he can follow it with the Shield Bot, so that's reasonable. And he's not going to die unless his opponent has Cool Taskmaster and the Gromash. Yeah. Shield oh. Bot. I wasn't actually thinking about him using his own face. That's really clever. Oh my god. I actually just didn't see that. Backspace killing off Tyrion to replace the Death Bite and activate the Whirlwind so he didn't have to use Consecration. Wow. That's that nice. was a sexy play. And I think that puts him in a little bit of a better board state even than using the Equality Consecrate. Right. And he's got that later on for, for even some bigger threats like the, the Rag that's pretty inevitable at this point. Yeah, it is true. The Ragnaros could hit the Divine Shield and knock it off. Again, that was a really cool play the more I think about it. Nicely done, Backspace. Uh-oh, Bomb Lobber. I don't feel really good about this one. I feel like it's going to hit a re Recruit. Yeah, <laughs> he actually hovered over the Whirlwind for a second, which using two cards to clear off an anti heal well, bot and a Silver Hand Recruit. If you Whirlwind, most likely you'll have to well, you'll have to like shield slam or execute. Oh play, no! Right? <laughs> well, the game has gone Powder's game. So he's so defensive. He's so defensive. He's just waiting. He's waiting for Gromash. He's saving Whirlwind because says that's my activator. But against Paladin, you give him a little bit of room to breathe, and all of a sudden they're going to be at like 30 health. Well, maybe not even just the health count, but cards like Ragnaros lose a lot of effect against uh, classes that have tokens. Yeah. Now that I think about it, uh, going back, I like your play. Of ragging a of rag. long time ago? <laughs> yeah, because ragging on an empty board against a paladin it is a luxury that you don't always have. And uh, they can f not flood the board, but 
you said those tokens just make rag not that great so getting that eight damage to face when you can is okay and his hand wasn't the greatest for being able to finish him off but it's still pretty good having a gore howl in your hand and a death spite is a fantastic way to finish off a paladin especially since Tyrion was is already gone well uh, i mean all the heals in hand actually didn't really make that big of a difference though so i think uh, in the end the consequence was about the same um here we go the ragnaros from backspace and this is an opportunity for him to once again climb back but of course we're all just waiting for the inevitable gromash rip off the top to try and seal away this game so as much as backspace ever to climb back Ooh. powder still is on a draw to win the game from this point on until he gets taunts or a way to heal up he's always in threat of dying Also, I guess, do you execute Whirlwind Execute, though? Uh, he was actually one uh, damage off lethal there. Be oh, you're right, because the Ragnaros. Whirlwind Execute Ragnaros. I've got the beast in my side. This is good, though. Yep, I really like shutting down the 1-1s. One you might ask, why is he using Whirlwind to just shut down the few tokens? Yeah. The Quartermaster is a very realistic threat. Yeah. And even also, it, it makes it so he he's lines himself up for an additional win condition with his uh, Ragnaros, keeping the board clear from those one ones. Makes sure it, it is. pretty fantastic for for your Rag to be able to come down. So, well, the Shielded Minibot is very annoying. It might not be the most effective card in the late game, but it serves its purpose. Yeah, I think you go for the 50-50 to win, though, right? Do you just oh? I guess Dr. Boom, does he change things? I don't know, like it's almost too good to pass up, isn't it? <laughs> it's like right here. Right here, you can you can potentially just win. Yeah, why not? What's he gonna do? You oh. still have Gorhau in your hand. Miss. And, and uh, he just kodos you right back with other peacekeeper. Alright. Oh. No! <laughs> the series is tied and Warrior has struck back. And right. we have liftoff. Alright, well, Paladin struggling a little bit right now well I mean it, it's struggling because warrior somehow scrapped months ago was considered a very very weak matchup against a lot of hunter decks out there uh, but nowadays hunter or yeah handlock has a really good chance of beating hunter and I would even put it close to 50 50 if not giving the advantage over to the handlock they have a lot more tools at their disposal especially with anti kill bot but doesn't look like this is gonna be a handlock no, I mean, he has double kill command. If it was handlock, that'd be great, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but you need those later on, even if it was handlock. He's got knife juggler and unleash to hounds. And look at this. Powder is playing zoo, but he has no turn one play. So then backspace might be like, okay, it's handlock. <laughs> and then the Noetron or Haunted Creeper comes out here and he's like, oh, wait, it's zoo. Anoyotron definitely lives up to its name. Haunted Creeper also. Those are two very, very tough cards to deal with. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, uh, you definitely want to keep your Knife Juggler and Leash the Hounds now that you see that your opponent is playing Zoo. Yeah. Because there's no way Handlock's playing Haunted Creeper. Unless it's a next level Handlock. Nope. Not even. <laughs> <laughs> not even a little bit? Nope. Absolutely not even possible. Uh, well, <laughs> Backspace gets uh, Animal Companion off the top. It's not Hover. Oh, it that's good. pretty good. It'll... It, it still has ways to go through it, but it takes a lot of damage away from his face. Like, the yeah. Hunter needs to stall for as long as possible until Unleash the Hounds and Knife Jugger yeah. can bring him back into the game. I actually think that would be one of the situations where it actually wouldn't mind seeing Leehawk just because you do have that Knife Juggler Effective, Unleash the yeah, Hounds. Effectively the same thing. It has Taunt on it because you know what it can do. Yep. Ooh, well, here we go. Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds is very effective. And you also have Bomb Lobber on Curve. And Savannah Hymate on Curve after that. So I'd say this is pretty good. These juggles are going to really matter. Just not to the face, really. It's all that matters. Oh. Ah. All right. Reasonable. Well, yeah. Like, it's like an average result. I think it's also okay that it didn't hit on the juggler because most likely you'll be able to kill it off. Yeah. Oh, man. What an awkward draw for Powder. 
I think really it's, awkward. This is just an awkward first five turns for Powder, I'd say. Not having a... Can you soul fire the knife juggler? Oh, yeah. Because you're... I, I'm not too happy with nah. the hand that right now. How overwhelming is... Probably... I'd want to keep that, especially for this matchup. Wow. Well, he lined up uh, a bomb lobber pretty nicely. But uh, if it misses and it hits the defender of Argus, I guess you're not even that upset either. You have kill command. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Does he give up his hound in case uh, kill command? I suppose not. Yeah. Because now his opponent will want to deal with the uh, bomb lobber, right? Or maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to want to deal with the bomb. Yeah. So even if he has kill command, it's pretty inefficient. But mm, unleash the hounds number two, not bad, not bad at all. That's bad news. Powder can't lose his board like this, but uh, kill command will help seal it. Yeah, and he's actually got a really strong hand as well with the Savannah High Main. That's a super tough card for you to be able to deal with, especially if you can lay it on a pretty empty board. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Very, very tough, and if, if you're taking a couple shots to the face of six as Zoo, you're not going to live very long. I've always mixed on Savannah High. I mean, I mean it has really good value, sure, um, but I always feel like it's a little too slow to play. Just because, like, in this scenario, it's fine, because he, he's actually had a really high health. Yeah. But a lot of games versus Zoo, High Main just, like, gets stopped by a Void Walker, and I'm like, well, that sucks. <laughs> or, like, even a Defender of Argus on, like, you know, like a like a two one, yeah. like a leopard gnome. Like, well, actually, he just gets stopped by really pitiful creatures. Um, and a lot of times, I care about quantity of creatures more than quality. Yeah, because <laughs> you have to match toe to toe. Yeah. Uh, Doomguard off the top here is such a big draw too. The fact that he's able to start fighting back, and he's worried because Hunter can race so much more effectively. He's afraid of even life tap at this stage. Yeah. Well, if we know that looking at Backspace's hand that he has a lot of burst and that's going to be a good draw as well. Is that lethal? No, it's close. No, very, very close. close. Um, I think you do it, right? He only has 11 damage on board. He has to generate Is that 29 18 health. 18 damage in one card. Yeah. You just put him on one health. <laughs> just kill command the face. And now, if this card isn't Alex Straza, there's no way for power to win this game. Yeah. And I am... 99.9% .9 certain that that will not be Alex Straza. That's a clockwork no. Close. Very close. Probably the closest card to Alex Straza. Well, uh, Hunter stabilizes against Zoo. Those Unleash the Hounds were so key. Yeah. So key for Backspace to be able to stabilize just a bull. But Shield Maiden. I, I think mean, Shield Maiden's and great. The Warriors are starting to tech in Warwind a lot more than they used to because they have the ability to. So I think that's a good card against Hunter as well. Wow, what a poor star from Backspace. Yeah. Oh my god, that's almost as bad as it gets. He has almost like no play until turn six. Like his, he's got Eagle Harpo next turn. Like the ultimate cool <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> okay, well he's got Animal Companion. Okay, that makes it a little bit better. A big deal. Nice, that is a really good roll. And Powder is pretty upset. <laughs> Not only did he top deck that, but he rolled the what, the best possible choice. So. Exactly. He needed that because the Armorsmith could have snowballed the game. So Powder definitely is not happy to see it. Yeah. All right, well, if he, he, I think he has to use the Fiery War Axe here. It's too easy to just be assuming that Acolyte can challenge it, and then he just plays the Equal Horn Bow. Yeah. Not to mention uh, you have to play around the possibility of Houndmaster. You don't like Execute right there? No, no, no. You need you need to use execute um, for like like more legitimate threats. Uh, you know that there's gonna be the high mains. Uh, you know, like the reality is, it's not about the early game damage in this matchup. It's about the mid game damage because what happens is they stabilize. Like warrior will stabilize at one point. It's all about how much help they have, and the way that hunter pushes through is through high mains. So I think. Um, you need to be able to keep your removal for uh, your high mains. Like a super high priority, at least in my opinion. Sometimes I get a little bit afraid that uh, if I take too much damage early on with a bad hand, that I won't be able to stabilize quick enough. Right. I mean, it's it's definitely something that's in the back of your mind. Yeah. But um, I, I think Powder realizes, like, yeah. well, you know, I'm still in the 20s. He also had a pretty slow start. 
he skipped turns one and two. He That's has true. to have a heavy hand, and yeah. I need to be able to save my removal accordingly. Yeah. A lot of times that will only happen, in my case, I'll use the execute on something early like that if either he has a big board presence um, or my hand is terrible. And I know that I'm not going to have many follow-up plays, so I need to be, rely on keeping the board clear. Spider had an interesting set of choices here. He could have set up a weapon to try and go for a whirlwind clear. Yeah. And then draw off his acolyte. Yeah. But that's too slow, I think. I think he realizes very quickly that he needs to try to stabilize. Now these high mains back to back. We were talking about this. This is how Hunter, in my opinion, is favored in the matchup because when it's like you put the high mains down and you slam it and Warrior usually doesn't have a response to it as easily as you think. Uh, it's going to be in trouble, but that's where getting this uh, cool Taskmaster was massive. You yeah. can execute this now. Well, going back to the last play, I actually like, I don't think going with the Death Spike is actually that slow of a play. Especially since you know next turn's turn six. Because no, it, it's the faster play. The slow play is to play the Accolade Armor up. Oh, okay. Well, the, the Death Spike play. Um, I think that's the better play in that situation because it helps you, especially with executes and an owl in your hand. Sure. You could clear the entire board next turn if you have a developed death spite in your hand, because you yeah, could true. you could hit the haunted creeper, silence the the high main, and then execute it. You're at less health though, I suppose. Um, Would you? And be? now that you have two death spite, I think in hindsight you might be right. Yeah. But uh, of course, it's always easier for us to talk because we have the, the advantage of information. Yes, we do. Why doesn't everybody just watch their own games with both point of views? Careful what you wish for, man. <laughs> Ooh, Harrison Jones to disarm the Igor Horn bow. Well, that's uh, that's going to come useful maybe in a couple turns, but for now, he still needs to deal with his threats. Uh, he's got Death Bite, Shield Slam, and I, th do you wanna, I think you want to use Shield Slam here, right? Because you, you want to keep the Execute for the high main. You want to use Shield Slam in this matchup whenever you possibly can, because you're not guaranteed to have armor. So Harrison Shield Slam also is viable, hmm. but with the if you go Death Spite, you can armor up after you hit the the spiders. Yeah. Not to mention that you also have Execute ready for the next turn. Yeah, so I like the, the Death Spite Shield Slam. Because you want to you want to be able to armor up whenever you possibly can at this point. I mean, you're you're pretty stable. You're above 20 health, but at the same time, your hand isn't that great, and there's always a chance that. A couple big threats will come down and you just won't have any way to deal with them. Or you won't have the health as a resource to be able to deal with them. Oh, this is clever. Backspace wants him to use the charge. He's yeah. selling like he doesn't have the high main. Yeah, this is pretty clever. And I mean, he's still putting out four points of damage per turn because of those extra tokens. So yeah. it's like a legitimate clock where you can't just armor up and net neutral it. Yeah. Uh-oh, Backspace got the angry chicken. I don't know if Powder <laughs> can bounce back from this. Oh, man, that's that's rough. Especially with beasts being added to the game that are actually really good. It just hurts even more to get angry chicken or hungry crab. All right, well, in all seriousness, uh, Backspace does have a trap up. Is it freezing trap? It Ooh, is. Oh, it is. So he can freely play this high main, be protected on the board. Uh, Powder will have to test for it just in case it's snake trap. He's got whirlwind execute. Not too bad. Not yeah. too bad. He's got the cards to try and stabilize. Oh, he's got bomb lobber. Of course, it's even better. Getting value to that while you can. All right. Well, he's in a pretty good spot now because he has a lot of ways to be able to continue to stabilize. He's been through both high mains now without even using the second execute. And he has Alex Straza as sort of an emergency or as a way for him to push to push for lethal on his opponent, so. Did he just hover over his face with that kill command? Nah, he's, he's just messing around. Might feel like it's close to like being locked out because Warrior has stabilized yeah. at plus 20 health. And uh, you haven't actually gotten too close. You do have kill commands though and Unleash the Hounds. Question is, how do you use these spells in hand? Do you use them at all? And it's still not exactly clear uh, if Powder can can completely stabilize without just dying, because there's still yeah. some legitimate damage on the board here. Yeah. I think Alex Straza is, makes him feel 
pretty safe. Yeah. You just gotta sure. stay out of range of burst. Oh, the shield, shield made it. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be. It's just looking pretty rough for for backspace right now. As soon as you let the warrior stabilize, unless you can piece together a lot of burst very quickly, like double kill command with like an eagle horn bow or something, then uh, it's it's pretty game over for you. Yeah, Powder got the, the right tools at the right time to disarm the hunter. Not being able to do anything on turn one or turn two was pretty rough. Pretty rough for backspace. So he's out of high mains. His web spinner didn't get anything useful. What other forms of like s s minion damage does he have outside of his knife juggler? Maybe um, Lotheb? Maybe Lotheb. I don't know if he's running like another Houndmaster to pair with like Animal Companion. I think he's just going to be top decking the answer to win here. Yeah. And is he... Will he even have the damage? Like if he draws into second kill command with Unleash, I mean he could put together like maybe 14, 15 damage in a single turn, but that's it. Hmm. Knife Joker number two. You know what? Backspace has yet to hit all of his Undertakers and uh, waste benefit off of it too. Yeah, so at this point it's actually getting more and more likely that he's just gonna draw into an Undertaker from from uh, the top of his deck and. Yeah, exactly. Very useless draw at this point. You know, Fiery War Axe is also really good here for Powder as well. So I think um, he just has to finally wear out the rest of the hand. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There's just like, there's no <laughs> end. There's no end to the beat, the, the life gain. With shield, ability. with shield minutes and Control Warrior now, they have so much ability to gain life. And armor is, is, a, is such a fantastic life gain tool because into this i mean backspace knows that this is warlock that this is zoo can he fight back from this position yeah well with, with spectator mode if you guys are wondering where the mulligans are if one person throws away their cards you actually don't see either player's hand until both players are done picking their cards so you can't spawn camp your opponent's hand but that's a great hand oh my goodness that is a really really good hand <laughs> Uh, I think Paladin is going to stabilize so well because Powder doesn't have the Undertaker start. I don't think he'll even have to stabilize. I think he's going to be the one with the board early on here. Because I, I guess there's an okay curve for Powder. But, yeah. I mean, those those creatures aren't going to be that great against. I mean, they're sticky. Wow. Um, interesting. Well, Direwolf Alpha is actually a pretty good draw for the next turns as well. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so he's got Quartermaster with his Silver Hand Reviews. Wow. I wonder if uh, Powder's going to feel the, the need to clear off the 1-1s one uh, as much as he can. Because a lot of times, it's uh, if it's like a 1-1 one -one and you have like a 2-1, like a you don't want to make that trade. So yeah. you have to hit the face. But uh, in this case, you have to clear it because he has the possibility of Quartermaster. Yeah. But either way, it's tough to clear while also playing around the possibility of Consecrate. So well, there's so many... Yeah follow-up plays that Paladins have now, especially turn 4, turn 5. Well, uh... Let's see, is this a possibility of Consecration coming out this turn? Pretty strong likelihood, I think. Yeah. Oh, he's got a quality, too. Wow, two equalities and two Consecrations. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, the quality is really good too. It does the same damage as Consecration effectively, like two to everything. Yeah. You also get the hero power. Well done. And Powder, he's going to be pretty stuck in some tough situations. He looks actually pretty frustrated right now. Oh, well, um, yeah. Just with the way this, this game has gone so far. Generally speaking, Zoo is supposed to overwhelm Handlock. Yeah. It's not supposed to be a position where they can stabilize so early. And yet... He's just got all the answers. He's got taunts, heals, AOE clears. He's got a <laughs> nuke to reset the board. Wow. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really that Powder can do from this spot. I think Backspace already ran away with the game. Yeah. Well, that is one way. If this doesn't discard Doomguard, then it forces his opponent to a quality concert. Great. This is a really big deal. Oh, wait. That's perfect. That is perfect. Yep. Okay, so he has to quality consecration this then. 
unless he feels balls enough to like equality and play something else. Okay, oh, that's, that's even better too. Yeah. The Pyromancer allows you to squeeze into hero power. Hmm. Do you think he values the body of the Pyromancer over the Consecrate? No. There's no possible way that that could happen, because this way it allows him to put out a a, a token as well, so. <laughs> Powder is very visibly frustrated. And the Pyromancer? Well, I still got bad news for Powder. He's still got more AoE too. He's got Consecrations. Uh, and next turn, he has Quartermaster. Wow. This is the very downward spiral of the zoo deck not being able to build momentum off its board. Yeah. All of our peacekeepers actually pretty decent as well. Sure. Well, I mean, you just you just hero power again and then yeah. build up another possibility for a quarter mass. Yep. Oh, Powder looks defeated. He really and does. It's because he is. This is single elimination, guys. <laughs> yeah. This is game five. Powder has to tap into Doom Guard number two. Yeah. And even then, it's still going to be just difficult. Yeah. There's a Slash oh. Belcher. Yeah. Playing an, an Argus on an empty board like this. Oh, so, man. Such an act of desperation. Tyrion Fordering comes into the hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, backspace. This. He could. He, he didn't have. I mean, he's so far ahead, he could have done anything here. And Powder knows uh, what time it is. He's staring at potentially dying even the next turn. He's got uh, 15 health. His opponent has two silver. Okay, I guess that's one way you can stabilize. But that's going to do it. Backspace advances 3-2. to two, And a lot of these matchups, which we coined one way.